kind of peaceful out here, kind of serene. Got some nice smooth water, tree behind me. It's not really much of a wind, it's still, but it's still cool in the morning. It's warming up though. Looks very calm, doesn't it? Looks very still. But appearances could be deceiving. And yeah, there's, if you look carefully out in the water, you can actually see a current. You can see movement of the water. If you look at its surface, you can see colors changing. Right now there's a lot of sun reflecting off of the water right here. It's illuminating my face. Reflecting off the water at different places. It gives different shades and different colors to the water. That's going to change through the course of the day. As the sun gets higher in the sky, the colors are going to change. What's reflected is going to change. The more clouds, or if the clouds clear up, they will be suddenly clear. It looks very still, it looks very unchanging, but the appearances are constantly changing. I mean, we have the water from this angle, but it looks very different from another angle. In fact, it looks different from another angle. You can keep changing angles and the water will look different. No viewpoint is exactly like any other viewpoint. In fact, if you focus on different areas of the water, you get different colors here. The water, the appearances, are actually constantly changing, constantly in a flux. Right now they look kind of still, but if we change the picture a little bit, it looks like things are moving very fast. Little twitches here and there. This tree behind me, we think this tree is constant. We think, I mean, it's going through some changes, sure, but it, you know, the changes are small or slow. But if we look at the tree from different angles, we get a different appearance altogether. The tree, the appearance of the tree is fleeting. It moves. It fluctuates. The appearance of me fluctuates. Right now it looks like I'm gone, but you can still hear my voice. Did I disappear? Am I now disembodied? Did I just uh, duck? Am I off to the side? Am I playing a camera trick? Am I even here? There's the appearance of my voice, but you don't see my face. Appearances are fleeting. Appearances move. Appearances can deceive us. So we have this angle of the tree that you're looking at right now. But what about a close-up angle? Does it even look like that tree anymore? Probably not. We can even try a different close-up angle. But this time, you're looking at it and you think, wow, that's a different view of the tree. Well, that's because it's an entirely different view of, of a different tree. That's not the same tree that you're looking at. But you didn't know any better because all you have are the appearances. You don't really have the real tree. All you have are the appearances. And appearances can change. We can, they can, the appearances can change so that there's more vibrant color and maybe completely opposite color. Or maybe no color. Appearances are fleeting. They need not remain the same at all. The different appearances, uh, one thing can have many different appearances. So what do we learn from this? We learn that what we get through appearances is not what's real. With this piece, Russell is pointing out the difference between appearance on the one hand and reality on the other. Appearances are what you see, the colors, the shapes, uh, it include you're not just uh, I mean appearances are you know broadly construed here not just what you see but also what you hear what you taste what you touch what you feel and appearances change they're fleeting they are temporary they give conflicting information we saw that with the water 
the, uh, the appearance of the water had many different colors happening all at once. Same thing with these trees behind us. You see many colors with the trees, and the color will change depending on the time of day. As the, moon, as the sun moves through the sky, the, uh, the trees will be lit up differently, and even the, the, the light of the sun will change depending upon its position in the sky. Uh, this is why artists are so uh, fascinated with the morning light and the evening light and the daytime light. Right? If you've ever looked at some paintings, of, I forget the artist's name, but uh, he did the haystacks. He would paint the same set of haystacks, but at different times of day, and you had wildly different colors with the haystacks. So, the, the point that Russell's getting at here is that appearances change. They're different under different circumstances. But, we don't think these objects change in that way. Right? When, when the sun moves through the sky and the colors of the tree change, we don't think that the tree is changing. We don't think that there's some difference in the tree. We think that the objects, I mean, yeah, they're going through changes too, but that the changes that the objects are going through are, you know, not that, not what the appearances tell us. Right? We don't think that the tree is changing in such a way that now the colors are different. It's the light, not the trees. But this carries on with the rest of the objects. If I were to walk up and touch this tree, so I'm going to walk up and touch this tree right here. It has a different feel depending upon where I'm touching it. Some parts are more smooth than others. Some parts are more rough than others. The appearances for objects change all the time even depending on how you look at them. Right? When, you look, when you look at an object differently at a different angle, the appearance of the, of the object changes. So what Russell gets at here is that you know, the, the appearances change. The objects are not going through that kind of change. The objects are what is real. The appearances are what is, what is changing. Well, if the appearances are what is changing, and it's false that the objects are changing like that, then it's false that the appearances just are what is real. It's false that the appearances just are what is real. There's a difference between the appearances and the reality. Well, this leaves us with an interesting problem. The appearances are what we know, what we immediately know. What we immediately know, or what you immediately know right here is the sound of my voice. What you immediately see is my appearance on the video but that appearance can change you can have one but not the other you can have just my voice but not see me does that mean that now I'm just completely gone the appearance is that I'm standing right here but I could be standing back here so I'm standing back here but now I'm back up front did I just move instantly that's not the reality, but that's the appearance. So, the appearance is not what is real. But what we immediately know, what we have access to, is the appearances. So what I mean by that is, you do not have access to the reality. Your mind cannot make direct contact with the trees and the objects around you. Everything you know about the world around you is given through these senses, is given through the appearances. But the, but the appearances are not what is real. So this raises, so Russell raises a really interesting question then. We have this difference between appearance and reality. And the appearance is what is immediately known. We don't have access to what is real. Is any of this actually around me? My mind can't access all of this. All my mind can access is, is the senses, and that happens all in here. So is this even out here at all? And supposing there is a reality out here, what's it like? Because it's not like what my senses tell me. My senses tell me to one thing, that it changes, that it's all over the place. My senses are not what is real. So, if all I know about what happens out here is what I get from my senses, 
How do I know what any of this is like? Now that you're nice and paranoid about what, uh, what your appearances tell you and what's really real around you, Russell emphasizes that answering this question, trying to understand what's really real, given that what we have is not what is really real, that is the project of philosophy. And it's messy. It's really messy. Common sense tells us lots of things about what is real, but common sense results in contradictions. And just with the appearances with the water, common sense tells us the water is blue or clear or green, depending on how you look at it. But water is not all those colors. In fact, you know, water is, doesn't really have a color at all. It's the particulates in the water that are doing most of the work. It's how the light is refracted that is doing the work. The water is clear. So this is the business of philosophy, trying to sort out the mess that common sense gives us. And it's not easy.